welcome one and all to today. The only one, a good one. Let's make it a great one. I am your host, Cassius Always Stallings. Blessed and honored to be here. So glad that you have tuned in to Aspire. Aspire is a webinar that's typically just held online, but today we are live on scene and also online. Aspire is a webinar designed to inform us and empower us to live our best lives physically, mentally, socially, and financially. As we get started today, I want to take a moment to respect the pause. And in doing so, I wanted us to do two things. I want us to either out loud or to ourselves or someone in the room to just say our names. Say your first name, your last name, whatever the name is you go by. We're going to do that right now. Amber. Megan. Kyle Lumper. Oh, I love it. Y'all going in order. Like, it's just like, yeah. it's just, you can just say it. Just say it. Just acknowledgement of yourself, acknowledging that you exist. So I hope all of you online have said your name. Um, now we're going to take a moment to pray. If prayer is something that you're not accustomed to doing or used to doing, please feel free to mute us at this time and join us again in a second. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for today. We thank you for this moment. We ask that you open up our hearts, our minds, and our ears to what it is that we're about to receive, Lord. And just bless us in this time and bless us as we continue the journey in life. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray these things. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Okay. Well, my name is Cassius Stallings, and today's Aspire is called Shine Your Light. It's called Shine Your Light because we wanted to take a moment to show up and celebrate individuals. And what I mean by that is uh, last month I was in a meeting and a uh, lady was talking about another organization and she would say that this organization showed up, they showed up, they showed up, and then the people were celebrated. And that made me realize that so many organizations and so many people were doing so many great things are constantly showing up for people. They're constantly doing things and we don't really get that opportunity to celebrate them. We don't get those moments to acknowledge great things that are happening in the world. We often look at those bad things and we think about those. But I wanted us to have this space to just take a moment to celebrate, to celebrate. And in today's conversation, we're starting out at Blue Jacket, Blue Jacket, Tall Rabbit. And we're hearing from Megan String yep. and Amber Parker. I'm so glad that they've joined us. And we're, we're very excited to be having this conversation. Um, my journey with Blue Jacket and Tall Rabbit specifically has been a wonderful one. I was introduced to Tall Rabbit, I want to say my first week of working as a wellness coordinator with Health Visions, and constantly people were saying, hey, you need to check this place out. Hey, you, you should go there. Are you looking to meet some people? You should go there. And sure enough, as soon as I started going here, I was making connections left and right. I was seeing people that I already knew, and I was meeting new people. And so I love that this is a space for that, but it's not the only thing that Blue Jacket does. And so we're going to have some time to learn about those things that Blue Jacket does from Megan. And then right after that, Amber's going to share. And Amber's going to share a wonderful story of just her journey with Blue Jacket in Tall Rabbit. So with that, I want to turn over the screen and the space to Megan. Hi, my name is Megan Spring. Um, I am the cafe manager of Tall Rabbit Cafe and Community. Um, Tall Rabbit is one of our social enterprises that um, Blue Jacket has to do a couple of things. So um, we not only um, employ graduates from our Blue Jacket Career Academy, but we also um, help allocate funding to be able to go back into our mission and to be able to bring more clients through the Blue Jacket Career Academy. Um, but Tall Rabbit also helps build community in the Fort Wayne area. Um, but this is one of our later enterprises. We also have um, Renew by Blue Jacket. We have Blue Jacket Clothing Company. We have um, Blue Jacket Cleaning Company. And we also do Fantasy of Lights and Fantasy of Lights um, that just finished in the beginning of January, but that employs 40 graduates um, every year through that. Um, so I guess I could go through and just talk a little bit about Blue Jacket. Oh, yeah, please, um, so Blue Jacket runs Blue Jacket Career Academy. Um, and that is a two week course that is in the morning, uh, the mornings for two weeks. Um, and in this, they learn a variety of skills um, that it's spoken and unspoken rules and regulations of employment. Um, Blue Jacket was created by our executive director, Tony Hudson, who is in this room. Um, and um, he worked at Allen County Community Corrections at the time and um, found that there was a, a gap in um in 
these in and outs of um, and those spoken rules of employment. So he found that when people had a um, purposeful full-time job that they were less likely to recidivize or they were less less likely to commit a crime um, again and to go back to prison or to be re-incarcerated. Re so by having um, and creating Blue Jacket Career Academy, it made it so that people were able to learn how to um, be in the community again and be able to learn how to not only get a job that they really liked um, and that they found purpose in, but to be able to keep that job, to be able to create a plan um, and find out what they want to do um, and what will give them purpose, what will make them feel purposeful. So um, Blue Jacket Career Academy is extremely accessible. Um, in the past, it only served individuals post-incarceration with criminal backgrounds. Um, and that was their, their goal population. And now we serve any individual over the age of 18 um, with a desire for gainful employment. So um, any individuals can come to us with a barrier to employment. And that can look extremely difficult or different for uh, many groups of people. So um, in the past, all, most of those employment barriers had to do with incarceration or had to do with a criminal background. Um, but now it can be um, a lot different. A, a barrier to employment can be anything as um, simple or complex as uh, a lack of childcare, a lack of transportation, um, intellectual or physical disabilities. Um, or it can still be that the criminal background, we can still get, we still do receive a lot of referrals from places like Allen County Community Corrections, adult probation, um, and the courts, but it can be from the community. Um, we even see individuals who have um, worked full time in one sector of their, um, of their life, have retired, and then just haven't been through um, a interview or um, job hunting in 40 years. So they just need, need a hand um, with being able to go back into the workforce. Um, Blue Jacket strives for 100% um, employment for all of our graduates. And in Blue Jacket Career Academy, there is a lot of strict rules and regulations because we wanna make sure that um, when you're going into the workforce, that you are you are aware of the expectation of what um, of what employment is and um, how much of a privilege it is to have a, a good job um, or a job that you that you like. Um, in Blue Jacket Career Academy, there's a lot of different activities that the clients do. So um, they do a Meyer Briggs personality test to find out what jobs. Um, would be really good for the type of person they are and what their interests are or how they how they work and function. Um, and I think that's a really important for a couple different reasons. So if a client ha has only worked in one area or only had opportunities to do one thing, um, they might feel like they're not a, a good worker or they might feel poor in the jobs that they've had in the past. Um, I know for myself, if I only had the opportunity to um, do factory work, for instance, and that was all of the jobs that I've ever tried, uh, I might feel really poor about, about myself or about how um, good of a worker I am, but it's only because that's the only thing that I've had uh, available to me. So being able to take this test, I would read on paper that that kind of, um, that kind of environment isn't where I strive. Uh, and um, trying different things or finding out what works better for me will show that um, I might be, I'm more able to do things that um, work better with my personality. Um, they also do mock interviews. So you're learning how to go through the interview process um, again and um, learning what are those spoken and unspoken rules of the interview. Um, as well as we do um, a job, a top six job search, um, which is going through Indeed and or another platform and looking through what jobs you'd like to apply for, what those need um, and some information on those companies. And that helps show you 
show the client what they are, um, what jobs are really looking for, what jobs there are available out there. And it kind of puts them in that headspace of being able to apply for these jobs. Um, we also have them to fill out an application and show them what, um, what the right way to fill out an application is and what may be some mistakes that they could be making and they could be changing so that they're more likely to get called for an interview. Um, and then we do another really interesting thing in my opinion, um, and it's called employee round table. So we actually sit um, the clients down with an employer in the community and they can ask them questions um, about different things that they're looking for or really any question that um, a potential employee would ask an employer. Um, and we do all of these things to be able to set our clients up for success in the um, in the workforce. We want clients to be happy in their job and we want them to um, be able to keep those jobs. Um, and then once a client graduates from Blue Jacket Career Academy, they can either um, work in one of our partnering agencies or corporations that has decided to employ our graduates, which we are you know, extremely grateful for through Blue Jacket um, staffing, or if they, um, if either their um, goal job or their um, like desired, um, sorry, I'm blanking on the word, but their their desired occupation fits with one of our enterprises, or maybe they need to be um, directly under Blue Jacket staff for a period of time for whatever reason, they can work at one of our enterprises like the, that I spoke about before, like Blue Jacket um, Career, or I'm sorry, Blue Jacket Clothing Company, um, Renew by Blue Jacket, Tall Rabbit Cafe and Community, um, Blue Jacket Cleaning Company, or Fantasy of Lights. So. Um, and then these enterprises, any of any funding that we get with these enterprises go directly back into the mission to be able to make it more accessible for individuals to be a part of. It's amazing. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Megan. That is amazing, all the work that you guys do. So I love what you kept saying of, of headspace and, and mindset. It's, it's really helping folks to realize that, again, you are great. <laughs> You know, that's why we we set our names at the beginning. It's acknowledgement of ourselves. And Blue Jacket, I feel, does a wonderful job of taking people from here and, and taking them somewhere further, you know, helping them to see, hey, you may think that you've just been working at this factory and that's all you could do. But we, we did this test and no, it shows that you're able to run a store. You're able to be a manager here. You're, you're way more qualified than you believe. And so I love when, again, when individuals and organizations are doing these things. And so this is why we're, we have these conversations to, to talk about these, you know, to show up and celebrate, you know, those different times that you're showing up. Because you said there's there's how many enterprises? Six. Six enterprises. See, so there's, would you say the Renew? Renew, Renew by, by Blue Jacket. Blue Jacket. There is Tall Rabbit. Tall Rabbit. Um, clothing store. <laughs> clothing store. Blue Jacket cl oh, or Clothing Company. Cleaning company. Cleaning company. Fantasy. Fantasy Lights. That, that is amazing. Seven. 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 Oh, staffing. staffing. Oh, and yeah. staffing. See, there's seven. Thank you, Tony, in the room. There's seven, seven social enterprises, which is amazing journey, you know. So those of you out there who may, you know, use these services or need these services, please reach out to Blue Jacket mm -hmm. and find out more information on how to go about it. And maybe, maybe even get a part, be a part of it. You know, maybe there's some volunteer opportunities in there as well. Um, Now we want to take a moment to shift and talk with Amber. Amber's going to, again, share just a bit of her story and her journey with Blue Jacket. Hello, um, I'm Amber. So um, I guess I'll start by sharing about me. My, I have two children. Um, I fell in some hard times um, back when they were small, I guess, 10, 12, um, and in that time, I lost them, and it took me a while to get them back and get back up on my feet and get going again. Um, and in that process, I was lined up with Blue Jacket, um, and it's been quite the journey with them. Um, I was just working at a factory <laughs> um, when I came out of um, getting clean and going through rehab and going through all that and Blue Jacket was there for me um they're still here for me 
Um, I started off cleaning for after COVID. Um, that was interesting. Um, after that, I went and worked at the clothing store for a little while. So um, it was about a year I stayed there. And, and then um, I went and did some cleaning at the embassy. Um, I was the cleaning supervisor there for um, just over a year. So got my hands on a little bit of all of the, most of the enterprises. Um, and then while I was cleaning it at Tall Rabbit, Megan here took me and made me the assistant manager here. Um, I, I really love working here and being with everyone that I work with and all the patrons that come in. And What, what would you say is um, one of the biggest things that stuck at you about joining Blue Jack and being part of the program? Um, that they're non-judgmental and they're very accepting. Do you feel like that approach is, why would that approach be necessary or needed? Um, because a lot of people with criminal backgrounds, um, or with issues, you know, getting jobs and whatnot, people tend to look at them different and they don't have that a blue jacket, you know, they help them you know like help them through so i'm just really nervous no that's okay that's okay megan i want to i want to go back to you for a second I, and i would love to hear your kind of journey on you know coming on staff and what that's been like or what did that look like previous maybe what you're doing before and how did you find out about this opportunity to join blue, blue jacket tall rabbit um so um i had worked in the restaurant industry for a long time um, I was a, I was a server for a while, um, but I also used to be a barista, um, for a few years in there as well. Um, but during all of those, mo the majority of those years, um, I actually attended Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Um, and with that, um, actually at the time I had a, I had a, um, well, I, I aspired to, um, get a uh, a minor of, uh, of fine art. So um, when we were picking out, uh, well, not necessarily being picking out, but we were placed at our senior internships, um, my advisor, which is um, which was Pat Eber, she's the head of the human services department there, uh, or the chair, I guess you could say. Um, she had said, she pulled me aside and she said, we um, have a placement that I think would be a really good idea for you. Um, they're really immersed in the arts, um, but I do want to let you know that they're very serious, that um, it's a slightly different than some of our other placements. Um, she essentially was making sure that I was okay dressing business professional, um, as that's a, that's different than a lot of their other placements. Um, and honestly, she scared me a little bit because she's like, I just want to let you know, like, you know, are you, you going to be okay with there? She said um, that they were looking for a self-starter, that they were looking for someone um, to really put that whatever that you put into your internship, you would really get out of it. Um, but um, I, I said that, you know, I trusted her judgment and um, I was ready for whatever she wanted me to do. Um, and so then I interned with um, Blue Jacket. So I interned in the Career Academy um, for the, the first semester of my um, internship. And I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed seeing the clients um, and seeing them grow, seeing them um, graduate. I remember the first um, graduation that I um, sat in, which um, you can, I mean, graduations are open to the public. So if you ever wanted to see one, um, you, you know, that you can do that. But um, I remember I just like cried a little bit because I was so, I, so proud of these people. And I, I didn't really know them. I was only there a couple days mm -hmm. out of the week, but um, I really enjoyed it. I really um, valued seeing people um, be proud of themselves and really um, just knowing their worth like that. So anyways, um, 
a few months go by and I'm watching the, or I'm in the career academy, maybe, you know, putting my input in here and there, but mostly just absorbing all of the information. Um, and then uh, I heard that we were opening up a, a new enterprise, the Tall Rabbit Coffee Shop. And at this time, I was starting to think about what I wanted to do for my senior capstone project. Um, and then um, Tony had found out that I used to be a barista. So he was like, if you wanted to help out there um, and work directly with, with clients in the enterprise um, sector of things versus in the academy. So um, then I kind of switched gears for the second semester and I was mostly in the cafe um, and we had a couple, couple different clients there at that time um, who have since transitioned um, either to different enterprises or to community employment. Um, but I got to work with those individuals. Um, I mean, I wasn't quite full-time at that time because I was still an intern, but um, I had a lot of fun doing that. And then it, for my capstone project, it created a, a training packet for individuals at the cafe. And then um, after that, um, once I graduated, then I just, I became aware of the opportunity to um, be the store manager at this location um, and to be in charge of this enterprise. And um, I was really excited for that opportunity. Um, so I sat down with um, a few of the, the leaders at Blue Jacket and discussed what that would look like. Um, and they kind of coached me through um, you know, what, what it means to, to have a job offer like that and, you know, kind of how to discuss, um, what I would, what I would need to do, which I felt like was really great. You know, you, um, it's not very often that you're receiving, um, a job offer for a position and they're letting you know what kind of questions you should be asking and, um, and just like helping helping you learn how to how to grow and um, what you know what like what kind of position you're in and those kind of things. Um, so I really felt a lot of a lot of appreciation at that time, um, and I think it shows just how much you know you can learn. Um, and then I took the store manager position here, and you know fast forward six seven months and. Here I am. Yeah. So that's my story with Blue Jacket. Rocking it. Rocking it. Doing a phenomenal job, I must say. Because you talked about that you, you know, came up with the training package. And I don't know if that is still the training that everyone receives here, but I know that everyone that I walk into in this place is just phenomenal. I mean, they they know your name when you're coming in, you know, and probably because I'm here often, but they probably they know others' names as well. You know, first time meeting them, they're making sure, hey. You, you still want that same drink. You know, they're bringing the drinks out to you. And there's always conversation happening. I often see pockets of spaces where folks are, you know, having conversations in here. And so Emma, when you think about that training, do you think that that's helped you to, you know, navigate conversations more? Um, Absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. No. Okay. You've so always been really, really good at talking like, to people. Yeah. Um, I guess you just bounce off other people's you know energy and yeah and allow that space to happen yeah, yeah. and yeah. I think it's always been cool and I, and I shared this with Tony before just the intentionality of this space because it says cafe and community and when we have that when we walk in on the door I mean it kind of just sets the tone for the atmosphere that we're in you know this is a community we're here and gathering and having this community space um I wanted to know a little bit about second chance just tell me some more about that so you were you were a uh, client for Second Chance Art. Oh, right. Do you want to talk about your perspective? Yeah. So um, I was asked to be in the Second Chance Art exhibit um, and lined up with an artist. So um, at that point, like we sat down and basically told her my story. Um, like went all the way back into um, my addiction and you know, how I lost my children and going through all that. And she would, well, my artist was a painter. So she had painted a picture like for that section of life. And then, um, or like beforehand, you know, like everything was 
great with my kids, you know, and then the downfall and then like the pick back up, you know, um, so they kind of break your life down into three sections, I felt, and then um, like broke it down into three pictures. And I think the second chance art exhibit, like it's amazing, it's phenomenal. Like when you look at the pictures and then, or whatever the art is, um, knowing that there's a really deep story behind it, um, it's just really touching, you know? Yeah. And it was, I don't know, I felt, I don't know, honored, I guess, to be chosen to do it for this last year. This last year. Yeah. But, well, oh, I oh, can we? Sure. For the last year. Sorry. No, you're okay. No, that is that is really, really cool. I didn't even know that that's hit, but I think I might have seen so some of this work that is around the building in, maybe. So um, the artwork that we have, um, Besides a few select pieces here and there, the artwork around the cafe is either um, artwork from the Garrett Museum of Art um, or it's second chance art. So um, the room that we're in now actually is the family suite. Uh, and I think a lot of it is just because, you know, you're kind of like a family in here, especially when you're meeting in here, whether it's with your colleagues or um, with a family or, um, you know, just the way that it's so close. However, um, around the room, there is a lot of second chance art. So any piece that um, you don't directly associate with um, a Native American piece, because those are ours with Garrett Museum of Art. Those are actually second chance art pieces. So um, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see behind us, this, these three were second chance art pieces. So this, all three of these were together. Mm -hmm. um, I myself am not 100% sure, certain the, the story behind them. We do have um, books around the cafe as well from some of our past year's second chance art exhibits that were um, made by St. Francis. And then they discuss um, the clients um, as well as the art pieces in those books. And those are actually the programs when you go through the, the second chance art exhibit that's normally held in September. Um, but it's a really powerful, powerful night. Um, we have um, live music and then we have some food out. Um, and then you can go around and you can um, you can bid on these these fine art pieces that all tell a really, really important story. And they've really made a really big impact in people's lives. Um, I know the last one was 14 clients and 14 different artists. And you're walking around our gallery space right at Blue Jacket, um, at Blue Jacket office, which is seven blocks south of here. You're walking around that, that art space and you're just seeing story and after story after story of all of these clients um, and all of these trials and tribulations that they really went through. Um, and then you, you get to see the client as well as the artists that created those art pieces. And they're in a lot of different, um, different mediums as well. So you've got um, some acrylic artists you have. Um, we've had a, a metal, um, an artist that worked with metal. Um, and we even have some in air, um, in one of our rooms here at the cafe that's um, crochet or no, what is it? Okay. Fabric art. So I'm just awful with words sometimes, but um, that's fabric art. So you can just really see the differences um, and how we value not only just all of these different clients and all of their different stories, but also how we value the artists and how um, they can show their art form. I mean, we even had a ceramic artist at our last um, Second Chance Art Exhibit. So um, if you come into Tall Rabbit Cafe and Community, feel free to, to take a walk around, check out our family suite, um, check out our other rooms and around where the alcoves are too. And you can see some of the second chance art as well as you can flip through and, and look at maybe some art that's either been bought or, um, or has from years past in those books and kind of see some of the stories and connect with some of our clients. Oh, that's huge. I love, Emma, when you were sharing um, about the second chance or just that it's a journey. It's a journey and it's a story being told. And yeah, there's a snapshot of this moment where things just weren't as great. But then there's this next piece where it's like, oh, yeah, this is where I'm in triumph. This is where I'm celebrating. This is where great things are happening. I love just that journey and peace because it kind of just is reality of life. 
like life is a lot of ups and downs. You know, moments are great and moments are low. And and acknowledging that we don't always have to be in that moment, or we can have this snapshot to remind us of this moment. But that's not where we have to stay. Um, I want to just ask one more question of you guys of just sharing one one great thing or one you know just one last tidbit that you would have just like, hey, if there was one person out there that knew nothing about Torah, nothing about Blue Jack, and you're like, I, I want them to know this one thing, you know, whether that's a feeling towards it, whether that's a, you know, an idea around something or something that you even encountered and saw while your time was here. Um, so first off, that's an incredibly difficult question to ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, take your time. Take your um, time. It, it doesn't have to be right now. But I think it's important to share that, um, and I think this kind of ties into what Amber said earlier, I think it's important to share that at Blue Jacket, um, as well as Tall Rabbit and all of the other enterprises, um, it's really important to us to treat everyone that we meet like they're the most important person that you meet that day. Um, and that doesn't mean that someone has to be important or anything like that to treat them a certain way, but I think it's important to share that everybody um, should feel great, they should feel worthy, they should feel that importance. Um, so that's something that we want to show everybody. We want, we want everyone to feel welcome, important, welcome in the door, safe, yeah, yeah. comfort. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess like it did just um know that if you want something in life, like when you come to Blue Jacket, whatever you put in, whatever hard work you put in, it's it's gonna come back to you. Yeah. It's gonna come back and take right. us off. That's amazing. No, thank you. Thank you both. No, those are both great, you know, tidbits of just treating people with respect. You know, I, I say lead with love, lead with blind love of just, it doesn't matter who this person is. It doesn't matter what they look like or where their background or what their story is. Today, I see you and I'm going to acknowledge you. I'm going to want to love you. Um, and, and I love what you said as well. I mean, man, you guys are getting confused. Are we live? Are we live? Um, um, I want to now turn to anyone in the audience who may have a question. I see a hand raised already. So if there's any questions or comments that you guys want to share, please, this is a space now to do it. Oh, that was my cursor. That was a hand raised. <laughs> I was like, where? <laughs> Oh, when does the Second Chance Art Exhibit happen? When does that happen in the kids? First weekend in September. Weekend in September. Um, and then the cost for the Career Academy, I see the other question. Um, it's $10 for a client to go through the Career Academy. Um, however, in that $10, they're actually receiving um, a stipend for clothing from Blue Jacket um, from Blue Jacket Clothing Company. So that $10 is really... Um, it's really just to prove how important it is to you because you are receiving more than $10 worth in clothing um, from that Blue Jacket clothing company. Um, but it's really just to make sure that that you're putting your best foot forward when you're there and you're, you're willing to make a sacrifice to show how important your growth is to you. So, so it's, it's so you're committed. It's more of the principle um, than the monetary gain. It, it costs the the nonprofit a lot more money um, on the back end to be able to put a client through, but they want this to be extremely accessible to any individual that needs it. So that's why it's the $10 fee. Yes. On, on that specific, is, I mean, any way for a uh, process, and this might be a question for offline, that I can make that the cash and stall and um, donation fund to where, like, okay, on the back end, okay, yes, $10 now, now, but then you get reimbursed in the name of cash and stall. So, um, yes. Yes. Yes, there is. Tony said yes. <laughs> yes. I know that you can make donations on Blue Jackets, um, bluejacketinc.org. Um, I know that you can make donations at Tall Rabbit. We have a, a specific area in the register that it can allocate towards the um, academy. I at just any thought, of our point systems, like our Clover, at any of those, we could yeah. take charge. I'm just not sure how like the reimbursement and that kind of stuff. I'm not sure how that works. That would be a Tony question. So but... specific to whichever enterprise. 
makes the most sense. Well, yeah, the, I mean, if you if you learn to support like the enrollment of a client, we do that. And sometimes people, there's a lot of individuals coming to us nowadays that are homeless. And so uh, that donation would credit their $10 enrollment fee. And uh, there's ways to do that as well. But that, Online. So the question, I don't know how much we can hear in the space in the room, but so the question was, is there a way to help someone in their journey, essentially pay, pay maybe pay that $10 fee um, and then help it go towards a certain social enterprise as they grow and expand as well? And it was met with the yes, there is. And please reach out to Tony if you need to know how to do that. Um, do you have a neat story you can share about someone who was changed through the community at Tall Rabbit? Who's that for Alabama? Oh, Nathan, that's a good question. And a difficult one. <laughs> um, now someone has changed through the community at Tall Rabbit. Um I I I I don't know if I have a specific story. Um, I do think that we do really focus on building community here at Tall Rabbit. Um, I think there's a lot of net networking that happens, um, but a lot of crossing paths here at Tall Rabbit. Um, we do have poetry slam nights on the second Thursday every month. Um, and I know that when individuals come to the poetry slam nights, um, a lot of times they're showing really raw, vulnerable emotion. Um, and they're really working through some things that they're, that they're um, processing or barriers that barriers that they're having in their in their personal lives. Um, so I have seen people um, kind of come in with like a more of a heavy feeling um, and then leaving lighter mm -hmm. when they're leaving the cafe, either in those poetry slams or um, just in general. Sometimes, sometimes people need just just need some kindness. Um, and then when they are met with that kindness. Oh, oh, yeah, we just that's had a, um, a family, they come in and they bring their a pet disability and a disability scooter. Yeah. Um, but they come in, they bring um, their service pets and whatnot. And um, the one gentleman of the group had passed away. And that was um, pretty hard for them, you know. And they came in and had their little meeting in the barn door room. And they were able to, like, section themselves off and... Um, we had a little spot for him and put his little coffee there and it's just like a little nice memorial type thing that they did for him and that was really special that was actually happened to us this morning and um just the appreciation you could like feel from you know like they knew that we thought of them and and he that he's loved here and yeah, he um he actually wrote a letter to um his group. So one of his group members happens to be really close with one of our baristas, and she had shared with one of our baristas that he had written a letter to the disabilities group and asked them to continue coming here because he he loved it so much. Um, and that really that really hit us, um, right in the chest because. Um, while we loved his presence and we thought that he was such a sweet guy, we just don't necessarily know the impact that we're making on people. And I'm, I'm really glad that he, he felt, um, that he, he just felt so, um, at yeah, home well, here and welcome. Yeah. yeah. So. Nice. We want everyone to feel welcome when they come here, you know, comfort and welcome and safe and. No, I definitely feel that that safe and that comfort and that welcome. That's why it is is live for me, but it's really my second office as my team likes to joke. So I, I really do enjoy being in this space. Some of the things that you guys have really just honed in on the fact is acknowledgement, you know, acknowledgement of people. Um, I want us to encourage, oh, we do have another question, but I do want to still encourage us to remain in that mindset as we move forward, you know, remain acknowledging folks, you know, as you begin to pass and somebody to date, maybe, maybe acknowledge somebody that you normally would just walk by. Um, so how do agencies get involved in being a place for graduates from the career academy to be a worksite placement? So um, we actually have um, an individual that works with Blue Jacket staffing. Um, and then her, her name is Jennifer Harvey. 
So um, you can actually send out an email to Jennifer Harvey um, with some information about um, what what um, like employment barriers that you're able to to work through um, that you're able to help um, help employ an individual with. So for instance, if your placement um, or your position is not available to employ someone with X, Y, and Z um, criminal background, just letting Jennifer know that so that she's not um, sending clients there to um, not setting them up for failure. She wants to set everyone up for success. But Jennifer Harvey's email is jharvey, so J-H-A-R-V-E-Y, um, at bluejacketinc.org. So if you're emailing, you can send her an email um, just with some information about what positions you might have that would be available um, for clients, um, what restrictions you have with being able to employ individuals, and um, and then she can go through that process with you of what it means to um, to be a placement in Blue Jacket staffing. She's also a graduate of Blue Jacket and employed for 15 years at the organization. Yeah. Ooh, so if anyone me. didn't hear that, she is a Blue Jacket graduate herself, and she has been employed with Blue Jacket for 15 years. So um, she yeah. knows it very, very well. Excellent. Celebrate to her, too. Shout out to Harvey. Um, I don't think there's any more questions online. Are there any questions in the room? That story is very impactful as you never know what that space where people meet means to them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, we, yeah. What does it mean tall rabbit mean? Ah, yes, could you please share? So, um, <laughs> what does the name tall rabbit mean is the question. So we um, are actually named after Chief Blue Jacket. So a lot of individuals think that we just like thought that big that rabbits were cool. so cool. <laughs> um, but Tall Rabbit, <laughs> um, Tall Rabbit was actually a nickname for Chief Blue Jacket. So he was called Big Rabbit on the battlefield um, because he was a he was a bigger guy. So he um, he fought really hard and really well for the for the Shawnee. And um Tall rabbit is a translation of big, big rabbit. So yeah, and then a couple of our um, our alcoves are named after him. So he was he really stirred up the battlefield. So one of his nicknames was also the whirlpool, and we have the whirlpool no the whirlpool nook. So um, yeah, it's really interesting. There's a lot, a lot of history in the space for sure. Yeah. No, that's so cool. I, I've looked at that name and I thought that's so unique because a lot of times we wouldn't acknowledge that part of history. I mean, obviously the war didn't go well for Blue Jacket in the end. Anthony Wayne, I believe, is the one who defeated him. Um, Battle of Timbers. Yes, I did do some research. <laughs> um, but but I know that that is powerful in the sense of, again, acknowledging every person. You know, there's there's history that was made in that story. And so there's still acknowledgement there. So it just goes further of this point that Blue Jacket has just continued just to make of everyone needs to be acknowledged, no matter the background, no matter where they come from. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's really um, just understanding the the entirety of your history um, and really just taking accountability from where for where you've been and where you want to be and um, finding that finding that middle ground of how you're going to get there. So um, all about, you know, you know, being comfortable with your truth and moving forward from it um, with transparency. Yeah. Yeah, so again, I think, oh, there's one more. Yes, Kyle. Yeah, um, anybody in the room who knows me knows I always have something to say, mm -hmm. especially at the end of uh, our time together. <laughs> um, two questions. I know we talked initially about how you use uh, personality tests. Has there ever been any consideration for something like the Enneagram or anything like that outside of like the, the EMS 5? Just, just out of curiosity, I mean, just, just. Um, so I'm not sure if we've thought of, um, thought of a different personality tests. I know that we use the Meyer Briggs. Um, yeah. I'm, 
probably because of its accessibility um, and the range of information that it provides. So um, the Meyer Briggs provides a lot of information about what, um, what jobs would be good for them, where they're at now, kind of their, um, each letter in that Meyer Briggs kind of shows them that they're a different portion of themselves um, and two different paths that they can think or act um, in specific ways. So I think the Meyer Briggs personality test works really well for what we, what information that we want from these clients. Yeah. But as well as it's it's extremely accessible for these clients to be able to take um, and to be able to learn from. I know that um, I know about the Enneagram some, um, but we want to make sure that not only giving these clients that information that they might need, but um, being able to to let them know how to use it versus just you know potentially getting a number and not knowing. Um, you know, not knowing what, what to do with that information um, or how that will service them. Uh, and then the follow-up question to that is, after they understand and they know their, their uh, personality type and their role and which enterprise they go to, what kind of follow-up is there after the fact when they either are placed in a role somewhere or if they go to a different company outside of um, the umbrella of Blue Jacket. Yeah, so um, if they go to a different company, then they have a 90-day um, probationary period. And a lot of times after that 90 days, they are offered um, full-time employment at those positions. Um, but then Blue Jacket makes sure that we stay in contact with those individuals. So we're calling them at 30, 60, 90 days, 120 days, and 180 days to make sure that um, they're they're feeling really purposeful at their job, they're liking their job, or they're still employed if they're not employed, if they're looking for other employment, if they've applied to other jobs. Um, and at the at the end of the um, at the end of the Blue Jacket um, Career Academy, they do fill out um, some information about where they want to be at the at the end of everything. So they're also asking them questions. Um, or I mean, where they want to be eventually, um, what their goal is. So they're asking questions if they're if they're the path that they've taken now is um, is following what that their original plan was. And then if they're directly at enterprises, um, they're they have a development plan, uh, making sure that they're reaching their smart goals that they've that they've wanted to reach, um, as well as following up with their supervisor. Um, in, a, in a consistent manner to make sure that they're doing things um, that fit their development, where they could grow, um, if their goals have changed. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that Blue Jacket um, either works directly with their client, with the client, or is if they're not working directly with them, they're with a third, a third party, uh, making sure that they're keeping that line of communication open. And last but not least, if the organization wanted to partner and get involved with what you guys are doing, because you're doing fantastic work, um, I definitely applaud everything that you're doing. Um, but if we wanted to get involved, how would we go about that process? Um, so I think it depends on the on how that um, organization wants to get involved. So um, there's a few different ways that that you, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways that you can get involved. Um, a few off the top of my head, you could sponsor a, um, um, oh, yes. So this is perfect. Have them reach out to our director of operations. Um, her name is Lindsay Lordy and her email is L Lordy. So L O R T I E it's spelled on the on the, the thing mm -hmm. um, at bluejacketinc.org. But there's a lot of different ways that organizations can get involved. Um, I specifically, I know that the the ones at Tall Rabbit, but there's, Blue Jacket is so large um, that you wanna make sure that you're reaching out to her so that she can give you some more specifics on that. Thank you, sorry. Thanks, Lindsay. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you that. 
Thank you both again for sharing. Thank you for that transparency and telling us all of you know the amazing work that Blue Jacket is doing. And again, sharing you know a bit about yourselves and your work within Blue Jacket. Um, some of the takeaways, guys, that we heard again is acknowledging self, you know, acknowledging that you are great. Acknowledging that, you know, there's a level that you're at, but there's a place that you can go that may be better. And then, but it's work. It's work. It's it's not, it's not just, oh, let me just have it. You have to actually go after it and you have to reach for it and you have to consistently stay at it. So our next point of connection would be to come to the tall rabbit, of course. Come to the tall rabbit, you know, enjoy their, you know, there's an updated selection of drinks each month. Yes. Yeah, so on the first Saturday every month, we roll out um, new beverages for that month. And then we have a drink tasting event from 10 to 12. So you can try a sample size of all of those new beverages that we come out with for the month. Um, it's really fun. It's a it's a way to um, try out our new beverages, but also that we can get feedback from you. So we actually give recipe cards or um, like a, sur a survey sheet um, with those cards. And those, um, then you can write your your thoughts, what you thought about the drink. You can rate it from one to five, um, and that's available to the public. Next first Saturday is from ten to two. Ten to two, first Saturday every month, ten to two. First Saturday, um, ten to two. And we love it. And then it kind of gives you an opportunity to connect with whoever you choose to come with. So you can come by yourself, and you could do that event, um, or you can come with your friends or your family. Um, Pretty big hit. And it's a it's a it's, it's a, a big hit. Cool. It's a lot of fun. Um, and you can you know just figure out what people like, um, what your friends and family like, um, and you can be around be around more more people just building that community so that's a lot of fun yeah thanks for mentioning oh yeah no problem well thank you thank you all again and thank you everyone who tuned in to aspire